Welcome, welcome. Happy New Year. Um, I'm filming this on the first day of 2022 and I am doing a bit of crafting today and I've been doing these um, flower shaped granny squares for a crochet blanket for some time now and I've got quite a few done so it's coming to the point where soon I'll be able to show you a finished product so I thought I'd um, go through what I've been doing so far in the process and show you um, some of the pieces that I've already made um, and it, I think if you would like I'll do um, a video where I go through how to make this pattern um, <coughs> So, um, first of all, I decided to do this because um, I've been donated a number of leftover yarns from various people. So, um, I've managed to build myself a reputation um, for this sort of craft. And when um, family, friends, or neighbours have leftover yarn, they tend to bring that to me because they um, are aware that I'll find something to do with it. Um, so a lot of the yarns here are ones that I wanted to reuse. Um, some of them were from half done projects. So um, my family and friends had started something that they didn't actually want to complete in the end. Um, so I sort of recycled those. So where I could, I, I um, unraveled them, pulled them apart, or um, did a bit of snipping or cutting, um, and managed to get quite a lot of usable yarn from those. And um, some others were just leftover pieces from other projects. Um, quite often, that people want to do a very specific pattern with specific colours, and then at the end of that, they've got something left over, and they. Don't have, they don't need it for anything else so those are the bits that tend to come to me all of the little pieces um, <laughs> so a lot of this is um, reused yarn and or recycled um, and other than those parts um, because I, I wanted um, so you can see that I, I have picked out certain colour tones that I did want to use um, and I still have bags of other bits that people have given me that I'm going to find another project for um, but yeah so I did actually go around my local charity shops as well to see what was available there um, and that was my first port of call and I didn't know if there would be um, many yarns available you know that people had donated but um, actually there were so I found I think my nearest one um, was a charity shop by the YMCA and um, so I'm in the UK so that, that's the one that um, is my nearest one for me um, and they had a really big basket of yarns that people had donated um, which was actually really <laughs> fun to go through so I was able to go through and see what yarns were the right colours and weight for my project and purchase those and obviously um, donate some money to the charity so that was a um, really nice find actually. Um, so some of those pieces are from there and you can see there's sometimes even tiny little bits that I've managed to use up and it's one of the wonderful things about granny squares is you've even only got a short strand and um, there's often a part of the pattern that you can use just a small piece in um, and for bigger pieces as well and yeah that you you know you use your your instinct with what will be good for what and, um, and go from there and, and stuff so yeah um, and I did need to buy um, a little bit more because I wanted some consistency in these border pieces so I didn't want to have a million colours for these border pieces I think I've ended up with eight um, 
about nine at the moment, um, which is probably more than I would have liked, but when you're using up scraps then you, you do often end up with a lot of colours, even if you can make them tone all together, um, you do end up with a, a lot of colours. I think you'll probably be able to spot as I show you these that um, there's a repetition of some of the colours but used in different colourways. Um, so that's kind of a way of making everything tone together but um, yeah of course if you uh, wanted everything the same colour or the same two or three colours that's of course an option um, but I, I quite enjoy that you can see I've used up quite a lot <laughs> of the little tiny pieces um, that people have donated me here to make actually, actually quite a really beautiful centre of this flower I'm really happy with that so um, sometimes these things add to the, the uniqueness um, of these patterns um, yeah but if you're looking to buy new um, and you can't find say from a charity shop or any kind of donated um, place <laughs> I don't know not every um, part of the world has something like a charity shop right so um, if you can't find that, um, maybe um, a church sale rather than, I don't know how a little piece of wood got there, but I have cats, so sometimes um, things get into things without an explanation. Um, <laughs> sometimes maybe a church sale could have something, or do you, you have a look at what's in your community where you attend things. And, um, raffle sale type things, um, yard sales, um, car boot sales, these sorts of things. Um, it's always good to use up leftover things rather than always buying new. Um, but if you do need to or want to be buying new, like a something that you specifically want, so you need to buy it new, um, the, the best fibres to go with are the natural ones. They last longer and they're much better for the environment, of course. <laughs> um, so I would look for bamboo fibres, um, hemp, flax or linen, organic cotton. Um, if there's no organic cotton, cotton is still better than a um, like a man-made fibre, synthetic fibre. Um, but organic cotton uses a lot less water and um, it obviously doesn't use pesticides. Um, I'm going to block these. I know you, you can probably see clearly on the camera that these are rolling up. I'm going to steam them um, and block them so that um, all the squares are flat and the same size um, before I sew them all together. Um, yeah, so I would always look for organic if you can. It might not say it on the packet, but it's worth looking. Um, and if you can't find plant-based natural fibres, then it, it depends for you on where you'd like to go next. So um, I would probably then look for recycled yarns, so recycled synthetics or recycled animal-based yarns. Um, so even though I'm I'm vegan, I feel like recycled animal-based yarns is something that I'm um, personally still okay with at the moment. Um, sometimes I I still even feel a bit like maybe maybe not. But um, if I'm feeling okay with it at the time, you know, and I reflect on it and it feels good, like I always I always kind of check how something feels in my heart because. If I'm working on a project where part of it makes me feel uneasy, then I'm not going to enjoy the finished piece as much as I would like. Um, it kind of ruins it a bit. So um, I do always check with how I feel about it. Um, so animal yarns, you'd be obviously thinking about um, wool from sheep, but there are all sorts of... Um, more exotic, I think they call it exotic um, animal fibres that are available out there that I um, wouldn't really like to get involved with. Um, <clears throat> not really keen on farming with animals, so. Um, and also, 
it, you don't know exactly where it's coming from and most of the world's um, wool is um, exported from New Zealand and they have different laws there to what we have in the UK. I think it's, it has been a while since I looked this up, I think it's 80 or 90% of the world's wool comes from New Zealand potentially. And um, they use a process there called mulesing, um, which um, I, th I think it's, it's legal like all over the world still, but a lot of places decide not to use it. So mulesing is when um, the the sort of the the haunches, the the top of the bum leg part of the sheep, is sliced off. Um, just um, like the flesh is sliced off, um, and that's often done very quickly without anaesthetic. It's just like a very um, time sensitive thing where the, the farmer might want to just rush through it quite quickly and get on to other things um, and I tried to find out why mulesing um, is a process that's commonly done and um, it seems to be something with stopping bacteria getting around the bum of the sheep or something like that and stopping an infection but um, I, would, I don't know it didn't make sense to me and um, maybe you'll know more about it than me or you can look it up um, I think one place I read about mulesing was the Good On You blog. So Good On You has, um, I actually really like it because it has a directory of where to find ethical fashion. Well, it rates all sorts of brands actually, so um, kind of high street, mainstream brands I guess. Um, it analyses them as well on their impact on people planet and animals and it gives them a rating out of five for each of those so you can look up like any kind of popular brand that you like and it, it will be there in the directory and it'll tell you what they've ranked it as but you can also find more obscure small businesses um, that have really high ratings five out of five and um, so their directory is great but they also have a very um, informative blog of people who are quite passionate about ethical fashion and that they do have articles on fibres there including um, process of mulesing and I think that was where I most recently um, read about that. So um, that's that's one reason that I avoid virgin wool, if I know it's virgin wool then I would rather have recycled wool or just plant fibres but if you can't um, can't get hold of natural plant fibers and you want to avoid um, even <coughs> kind of recycled or reused wool fibers um, then you could have a look at synthetic fibers um, I, one thing I would just say is if you do go down that route and I know that I have some acrylic in these pieces here um, is you could consider getting, um, you can get these kind of fibre saver bags um, so that when you wash something you put the item in the bag and then in the washing machine and the bag catches the, the little, little tiny, tiny, tiny microfibers, often the ones you can't see, um, it catches those and then it stops it going into the water source um, and one brand that I know is, I think it's called Guppy Bags, but there'll be other ones, so um, you can have a, a look into it. And you can often buy these from um, different ethical places. So um, I think I've seen, so the one I have, the Guppy Bag, I think I've seen it on Ethical Superstore, which is um, a UK based, uh, internet based. Um, store um, it does fashion but it does um, various other things as well and they have one and uh, thought have one so thought do ethical fashion and um, I think know the origin sells it as well um, who have a pop-up in London at the moment but they're mainly internet based um, thought are internet based as well 
Um, so there's a few places, so perhaps like if you are going to buy something anyway, like I think we'll superstore do food and other things, groceries and homeware and things. Um, if you're buying something anyway, sometimes it's easy just to add it to an order of something else. Um, but yeah, and also if you do ever purchase ethical fashion, have a look in their um, kind of accessories section of their website because sometimes there's a guppy bag being sold there or in gifts or it depends on the, the website obviously um, what they have um, available so um, oh, you, you might already have one of your own <laughs> um, but it's it's worth doing that so the, the little microfibers don't get out into the water source and um, so having more and more um, animals, um, ocean animals, being uh, washed up dead on the shores because there are loads and loads and loads of these tiny fibres, plastic fibres and microplastics gathering up in their stomachs so that their digestive system is blocked and they can't, their bodies can't nourish themselves with what they're consuming. Um, and it's it's just not fair on them, you know, obviously they're, they're nothing to do with um, plastics and they shouldn't have to deal with this, but they are taking the hit. Um, so, um, it's a bit of a lowdown on what I know about ethical fibres, but you may know more than me about different things and um, if you do want to share any thoughts or considerations with the uh, small but potentially growing community here <laughs> then um, obviously there's a comment section if you'd like to um, discuss that a bit more. I'm just laying out some of these squares so you can see kind of how they are looking together. Um, what I think I'm going to do when I lay out the full blanket is start with the lighter colours and then sort of spiral outwards and have the darker colours on the corners. Um, but one of the beautiful things about making a blanket like this with the squares is that there's no kind of prescriptive way you have to do it and it's all completely flexible right up until you, you start laying out your squares and Obviously, you only have to commit um, once you are ready to. So, um, yeah, one of the wonderful flexibilities is that at this point in time, this could look like anything <laughs> at the end. Um, and, yeah, so, yeah, you've had a look through my squares so you know kind of what I'm putting together. Um, I've got a little tray here. I actually put all my projects on all of the parts of one project on a tray. So wherever I'm working, I can carry it around. And, um, it's quite handy actually. And sometimes I put a snack here just so I remember to have breaks and snacks and <laughs> those sorts of things. But um, So I've got these colors left to go. Um, and you know, I may even pick up some more from charity shops or maybe gifted some more from um, older projects from family and friends but this is what I've got left to use this is one that I bought new um, it is actually acrylic but because I'm gonna because I know I already have acrylic within here um, I felt like that was okay and I can use the guppy bag to wash it um, and I think I'm gonna have a lot of this left over so if I do I'm considering making a scarf or a hat from it depending on kind of how I feel at the time and how much is left but um, yeah I do like to use everything up all the last little tiny pieces um, yeah so um, I'll do a follow-up video but I can't say when that will be um, but I'll go through making one of these squares um, I'll do it in a separate video just so that this isn't too long and I'll um, eventually <laughs> show you um, kind of how it's turning out the finished product as well um, 
just in case you're curious for that sort of thing. Um, I actually came across this pattern for these flowers, flower granny squares, a long time ago, but I'm gonna have a dig around and see if I can find my source for that. So when I go through the making of the actual square, I'll link it to the original if I can find it. Um, and then you can, yeah, you can go through with um, the original person if you'd like, um, and obviously it'll be credited to her so that you um, you know where it came from. It's not my design, basically. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, and I hope you're enjoying any crafting that you're doing yourself, um, and all the best wishes for 2022 and beyond. Bye!